All right. Well, in order to get you all back to your lovely lives on this beautiful day, I think we'll get started. Um, first and foremost, Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, and huge thank you to the Aurora Chamber of Commerce, Sandra, um, and uh, Sandra for uh, helping us get this, this moving. Um, the topic of today is something that affects a lot of people that we work with. Um, and it's really about helping you manage neck, back, and shoulder pain from home. Um, a few housekeeping items before we really dive into today's subject is um, all of you are currently on mute. If you have a question, please feel free to unmute yourself um, and ask the question at any time. We really want to make sure this is interactive today and really giving you some great takeaways to incorporate into your everyday life. I will ask you though to please mute yourself again once you ask your question. Or alternatively, if you're comfortable, um, you can use the chat function um, and we will be monitoring any all the chats um, and pose the question to the group so everybody knows what is being asked. All right, so today I have with me um, my managing clinical director of the Aurora office and registered massage therapist, Sandy Levy. Um, Welcome, Sandy. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, myself, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Robin Hansberger. I am the Business Development and Operations Manager at Hansberger Physio Plus. Oh, you're more than just that. <laughs> well, uh, today's about you, Sandy, not about me. Um, right, 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 all right, okay. We've got a great turnout today. Uh, again, we really appreciate uh, you joining us. Um, and for those of you who don't know, um, Hansberger Physio Plus is all about helping you feel better, live better, perform better, and work better. So whether you have a new injury, you want to take your game to the next level, or you're just finding it harder to move like you used to, Hansberger Physio Plus can get you to be your best you. Not only will we treat your current pain, but we will address the cause of your issues and empower you with the right plan for attaining long-term results you can celebrate. So that's just a little bit about us and our general ethos. Um, so we really wanted you to get an idea of the cause and the empowerment. That's a really big part of who we are, and that's going to be a recurring theme that you see today. Um, Hansberger Physio has been in the Aurora community for over 37 years. Uh, we are a family business through and through. My mother and father are both registered physiotherapists and my brother is a registered massage therapist. Now I am not a medical practitioner. I will revert all questions to <laughs> Sandy in that regard. Um, people often ask me if they can book a session with me. Um, you can, but I don't think you'll make very much progress. So that's just a little about me and a little about our business. Um, but at the end of the day, we all have different goals and objectives. So whether you need to feel better, whether you want to live better, whether you need to work better, it's all about physical performance and moving our bodies. So feeling better, living better, working better and performing better, we will focus on all of those things today. Um, so we really wanna make sure that regardless of what category you fall into, um, we are here to help you work on your goals and have long-term results you can celebrate. Our difference, that's what's really key. Um, we believe in a whole body approach, which is key to injury prevention and overall recovery. We believe in a root-based therapy that helps you achieve long-term results. And with the right plan, you will live a healthy life. Personal empowerment is key. If we don't put a plan in place and help you reach that goal with something that feels attainable, it's, it's really not the right, right fit for you. So it's all about personal empowerment and making your plan relevant to your life, your goals, and the task at hand. Our team, who are we? Uh, we have a very broad team, which is really exciting, and that's really helped us to refine um, our mission statement, our values, but really also our treatment philosophy. So we have nine registered physiotherapists, four registered massage therapists, two athletic therapists, two personal trainers, one certified athletic trainer, 
one strength and conditioning coach, one Pilates trainer, a nutrition coach, and four amazing administrative professionals that really do make my world go round. So um, shout out to my amazing team uh, who's been more than supportive during all this uh, COVID-19 kind of temporary shutdown. So for those of you who aren't aware, our doors are temporarily closed for in-person visits. Um, but we are offering virtual care and uh, that's something that's been very well received by our current clients. But also we've attracted a lot of new clients who have had new injuries over the past couple months and really are empowered to take control of their overall health. So our team is very broad. Lots of different background experiences, working with professional sports teams, different organizations, um, and multiple different uh, qualifications, whether that's acupuncture, dry needling, cupping, those kinds of things. So we have a very broad uh, group, and we really make sure that the individual is matched with the right therapist based on their injury, their skill set, but also personality. It's got to be the right fit. Our locations, we're kind of neat in that um, we have a very broad um, business offering. So we have our traditional clinics, which are in Aurora, which most of you in this group, uh, that's probably the most convenient. We also have a location in Markham. Um, we are opening a clinic in Burlington out of the Golfers Academy, which is an indoor golfing training facility. And we will be offering our services there um, as soon as we're given the green light to open by uh, the provincial government and our respective uh, colleges. North York, um, we are in LPS Athletics. Uh, so we are working out of their high performance facility and this location is also open to the public. So this is very traditional for our space. Um, but what's unique about Hansberger is we also have what we call private locations. So the Ovenbird Golf and Country Club is a private golf club up in Muskoka and we are there seasonally to support uh, the members and their guests. The Toronto Cricket Club, we've been there for 40 years and change. Um, we are there exclusively for the guests of the, and the members of the club. So we offer traditional services there, massage therapy, athletic art therapy, and physiotherapy, but it's exclusively for the um, members of the club. As well, uh, what's quite unique about us is we also have on-site locations in pharmaceutical manufacturing plants. Um, so Apotex, uh, generic um, over-the-counter uh, pharmaceuticals, and Sanofi Pasteur, which is more name brand. Um, so we actually have clinics within their operating facilities to take better care of their employees, but also uh, to help prevent repetitive strain injuries and uh, create a more dynamic and proactive uh, company culture. So that's kind of unique. And then the last thing, um, a lot of people ask this question, we do provide home visits. Right now, we are not providing home visits because of the temporary suspension of our in-person services, but we do offer home visits for those who may not be able to travel, those who've just come out of surgery, or just have too much on the go in the middle of their workday, we'll either visit you at the office um, or we'll come to your home. Or we find a mutual uh, location, whether it's on the golf course, um, things like that. We've worked in many different locations and we're really just here to serve you. So the reason I brought this slide up today is just to show you how broad um, we are reaching within the greater Toronto area. And we also do have a few new locations uh, that are in the works. So we have been very busy during the temporary shutdown um, to really come out of this on top. And just to intrude, intrude if you don't mind there, Robin, um, as, as Robin had said earlier on, we're also doing telehealth. So even when we, if we can't see you now, at least we can get to help you now through virtual therapy. And then eventually, if you still don't feel comfortable coming in, we can continue virtual therapy throughout, you know, as we get open, et cetera. So there are many options available for pretty much everybody. Fabulous. Thanks for that interlude. And that's exactly the case. Um, so the premise of today is really to help you take control of your health from the comfort of your own home. Um, there's going to be lots of different things that we cover today. Um, but I think what you'll find most is we're really here to help you take ownership of your body, acknowledging your pain and your changes, because as we age, regardless of what age you are now, things change and there's different pain points that occur, whether it's through work, whether it's through play, uh, whether it's through, through previous injury. Um, really though, the main thing today for, for the general group, the general population and all of our clients is when in doubt, get it checked out. Um, th that's sort of the underlying um, 
uh, theme you'll also see today. There's a lot of things that you guys can do for yourselves from the comfort of your own home. But again, listen to yourself. If something doesn't feel right, raise your hand and ask a question. From Hansberger Physio, advice is free. That's what we're here to do today. We're here to educate you. That, that's the main premise of today. And really just to help you feel better and live a more healthy, active life. So again, taking control of your health. The body- oh, oh, Hold on, Robin. Robin, there's a quick question, if oh, you don't mind me intervening. Absolutely. Um, there was a question is, do we take MVA and insurance? Yes, absolutely. We will take, you know, if you're in a car accident, you know, God forbid, uh, of course, we're there to help you. We do, we're all registered therapists, so we are in a line with all insurance companies. And Salma, just uh, to further on that question, we are FISCO licensed, which means we can bill directly to the insurance company. We do a lot of motor vehicle accidents for those of you who aren't aware of what the MVA acronym stands for. But we also do a number of workplace safety injuries. So WSIB and MVA is something that we are very in tune with. Um, and if you would like some more information, Salma, on that, we can definitely touch base with you after the fact. We also do functional ability evaluations and uh, physical demand analysis as well, but happy to follow up with you afterwards on that if, um, if there's more interest. Yeah, that would be great, Robin. Thanks. Perfect. Hope that answers um, your question. My, my so email far. will be at the end of uh, this presentation, so um, you can, we can definitely uh, take that offline and connect that way. So taking control of your health. The body is like a vehicle. How many of you maintain your regular oil maintenance schedule? I'm hoping to see that most of you put your hands up. Um, I can't see all of you, but I do hope that the general consensus is yes. And we know that when we take care of our vehicle, it lasts a lot longer. It's gonna break down a lot less. Now, out of curiosity, how many of you treat your body the same way? How many of you go in for regular maintenance? Do I see far less hands up? I'm not sure, but I'm going to just make an assumption of yes. So that's really what we're here to do today is also to educate you on how you can actively take control of your health from a general maintenance perspective. Cause versus symptom. Symptoms are a physical or mental feature which is regarded as indicating a condition of disease, particularly such a feature that is apparent to the patient. For example, dental problems may be a symptom of other illness. So symptoms can be sore neck, sore back, sore shoulder. Those are symptoms. That doesn't mean you have a bad back. That doesn't mean you have a bad neck. But really what we're going to do today is talk about the cause. Um, so the cause is make something especially bad to happen. This disease can cause blindness. So there is a definite, definite difference between the symptoms you are experiencing today, which drove you to participate in this webinar, and the actual cause of these symptoms. So today we are really going to focus on the cause-based treatment approach, which is in our Hansberger DNA through and through. One thing I want to highlight is Hansberger Physio, if you come in for something like a shoulder issue, neck issue, or a back issue, chances are we won't even touch those areas of your body because we are looking for the cause. We're going to get to that a little bit later, but I really want to instill the difference in the 80 participants today of the difference between a symptom and the cause. So Sandy, I'm going to pass it over to you now to talk about how we go about developing some of these symptoms and how the symptoms are rooted to the cause. Great, thanks Robin. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. I'm, I'm in my basement, but I hope everything, the sound is all good. Um, all right, so if we look at this slide here, um, I know I could recognize a few of these pictures from myself. Um, I'm not in there yet, but I do Sandy, recognize I'm a few of them myself. Interrupt. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Um, I am having a problem hearing you. Is there possible you could turn up the volume a little bit? Yes, ma'am. Let Thank me uh, do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's better. I can One hear second. you moving. Can you, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, that's better. Thank you. Okay. I have a little mic piece on my shirt, so uh, oh, okay. I hope it's all working. Okay. All right. So, um, as I was saying, these pictures represent kind of what we're all going through right now in COVID, uh, except for the ones where they're sitting side by side. That's the way we used to be when we were in a waiting room. Um, but for now, the rest of us, um, 
are now doing these, some of these pictures. We're sitting on our couch. We're leaning forward on our laptops. We're falling asleep on the couch because we're so bored we have nothing to do. We're playing with our kids, trying to do work, trying to organize ourselves. But as you can see with each one of these individuals, the, the main problem is that I can see for sure as a therapist is they're in the wrong position and it's going to create a lot of symptoms. And, and that's what we're kind of moving through today. So, yeah, you can move to the next slide here. Okay, so what can cause an injury? So, as we saw in the picture, sedentary activities can cause an injury. So, not doing anything and then getting up really quick without realizing it and twisting the wrong way, right away, that can cause a, a symptom. Um, we have a misalignment or an imbalance in your body. Uh, for instance, you could have a leg length difference. You could have um, a limp that you've had. You could have uh, missing muscles or, or anything. You know, your head could be out of alignment because you've been staring at a computer for so long. Um, you could also have previous injuries or a, a medical is issue. Um, so how do we, oh, where, where are you going? Sorry okay. about that. That was me. I no, no. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe you're, you're, you're an athletic individual or you're starting up a new activity. You, maybe you didn't warm up properly, so you didn't get the muscles liquid enough internal. Where are you going? Okay, <laughs> liquid <laughs> enough internally to, to really keep you fluid, so you, you're not going to actually rip or tear a muscle inappropriately. Or maybe you've done improper technique. You've gone to the gym for the first time, not knowing what to do. Maybe you're just going to give it a whirl, maybe what you did 25 years ago. That can hurt something, twist something. Repetitive moments, your, your movements, you're at your mouse. For eight hours a day, now your wrist, your finger, your thumb, they're all painful. They're, in sp they're, they're tight. You can't move them very well. These are all injuries that can happen. Um, and again, we can continuously go through the list. It could be, you know, you get up from the couch to bend up to, to reach for the kid and all of a sudden your back goes, Ugh! or you're in the garden and you try to get up, but the knee won't move. You can't straighten your leg. These are all things that are happening to us right now. So switch to the next slide. Yeah, absolutely. Please and thank you. So how do we at Hansberger assess this, these, these issues that you're having? Or, or how do we look at really what's the cause of, of, of what's truly going on? So when you come into our office or when we do a virtual health scenario, the first thing we kind of look at is your foundation of your body. Your feet, the first thing to touch the floor every morning and the last thing to get off the floor every night is your feet. And it's, it's your foundation of your body. So what we need to look at right away is, is your gait. How are you walking? Are you walking with the normal range? Or are you actually, the feet are turning inappropriately when they shouldn't be? Are they, are they not hitting the ground in the appropriate manner, which is causing a disruption up the chain in your body, creating an imbalance in your pelvis? Maybe you have a leg length issue that you didn't even know you have, a, a minor limp. You're creating poor shock absorption, so now you're creating heel issues. Or I'm sure people have heard of plantar fasciitis, which is the, the tightness in the bottom of the foot that you, you don't understand why you're having these things. So we at Hansberger, the first assess, the first thing we do, the, the most important thing is assessing you. That's the key to what we do. So we go from the foundation of your feet of your body, and we work our way up. So That's perfect right. interlude there, Sandy, is this is really a great way to discuss cause versus symptom. So if we use the analogy of a house, um, if the foundation is cracked on the lower left side of the house, it's likely that this is going to reverberate up to the second story of the home and perhaps the right window might not close all the way. So the right window not closing all the way is a direct correlation to the symptom. So for example, some of you on the call today might have shoulder pain, but the shoulder pain isn't because you have a bad shoulder. It's because there's an underlying cause somewhere else in the body that is resulting to this um, feeling. So that's the perfect little analogy. Um, and or you could also uh, use the analogy of your car, your car tires, right? Or the alignment of your car. If the alignment is off in the car, the tires will wear very thin. All of a sudden you've got to renew your tires more often and earlier, costing you money. Okay. So again, the, the wearing of the tires is a cause from the alignment being off. So speaking of alignment, here we go. So us at, at, at Hansberger, we look at the importance of your alignment of your body from your feet 
all the way up to the tip of your head. And we understand that certain areas of the body need to be stable and other areas of the body need to be mobile. Most people, unfortunately, have it backwards. The areas that need to be mobile are stable and the areas that are stable are mobile. So, and then if we also look at the other side, when your body is not in the right position and you've done something to it, you will cr cause an alignment issue. So again, if you look down on the, the first picture there, you see the ankle with the arrow turning onto the inside, and then you look up at the right shoulder and the right shoulder's dropping. There is a cause and effect. You could have sprained your ankle and created a right shoulder issue without even realizing it. So again, once we've looked at the assessment of your body and the alignment, the next most important thing for us is your posture. How many How you just sat up a little bit straighter as soon as you <laughs> your posture? This is what everybody, no, not every of us can see what we truly look like because we live in our bodies. But what we look at is where your body sits in sort of a neutral plane, not only in standing, but in movement too, because we can all stand straight, but can you move in good posture? Can you function in good posture? Because if you did and you were in the right place, you probably wouldn't be in any pain. So these are the other things that we look at. Now, you know, we got posture, we've got alignment of your body. Let's go to the next slide, if we may, please. So these are all great things, but how can we manage our pain from home? Okay, so can't get into it I now. have a question for you. So Please. let's use an example because I'm an athlete. I have been through many rough and tumbles in my life. Um, and yes, I am your perfect candidate for poor ergonomics, um, <laughs> all of the above. So mm -hmm. I thought today would be a great example is if we actually shared a real story about real symptoms and pr and really articulate to the group today how we would go about assessing that issue and providing a proper home care plan. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about my issues. I have been experiencing severe tightness in my calf muscle. It's been over okay. a month and my mm -hmm. limited ability, uh, it's limited my ability to do any type of activity, which right now the sun is shining outside and my dogs need a walk. Um, <laughs> So these are just things that I've been thinking about. Can this result of, can this be a result of the tightness in my lower back from sitting at my computer all day? Um, can this be a result of sitting most of the day at work? I get up as much as I can to walk, but the tightness gets worse from sitting. Um, mm -hmm. I've been doing many stretches, uh, but nothing really seems to be helping. I'm looking at lower back, hamstrings, and hip flexors, and I do use a tennis ball for myofascial trigger points. Um, I've also been icing. Um, what should I do? Okay, well, Robin, you know what? Those are three great questions. Oh, go back. I got to see the question. <laughs> Those are three great questions. And I also, you know, appreciate the fact that you've been icing. So let's start from the beginning. Um, you have this tightness in your, in your back, in, in, in your calf, and you think it's coming from your lower back. The first thing I'd say to you was, um, well, you're sitting all day. Most likely your posture in your body is not in the right position. Your alignment in your back is probably not in the right position. And we get all our information from our body, from our head. So what happens is you're going to get the nerve connection or the information for your calf to do something from your head. But if you're sitting with a humped position coming forward, it's not good. Your, your information is not going to get through that highway proper because the, the issue is you're bent forward instead of in a straight, proper posture and aligned position. So I don't believe it's coming from your low back as much as it should be or will be coming from your mid back, what we call your thoracic spine. Now, now just um, quick, I would like to just to hold that thought just quickly there. So sure. is there a difference between managing a new injury or uh, an existing injury? Like I, I get confused a lot between when I should be icing and when I should be heating. Absolutely. And you know what? That's a great question as well. Most people do. So the first thing I tell people for the first two days, use ice directly on the injury. So I it's should have been using ice. I should have been using heat is what you were saying. Heat is always after about two, after about two days, you generally, you, the, the general course is to be now using heat instead of ice. Ice okay. is there to take Perfect. down the inflammation, decrease the pain. 
okay. but once the inflammation is gone, you need to use heat to create more circulation to help feed back the muscle. Okay, so for a new injury, just to clear this up, the first thing I should have should do is just rest, uh, ice the area that I've injured, um, apply compression, and then elevate. Is there anything Correct. else you suggest for a new injury other than when in doubt, getting it checked out, and uh, hopefully imaging um, isn't an issue, but those would probably be the, the most important steps. Next step. Injury, yeah, right? yeah. So right now, rice, rice is your best thing. Rest, ice, compress, and elevate is always number one. Okay, perfect. So that's for a new injury. So maybe we move forward to the next slide and really talk about ongoing injuries because I know a lot of people on the call today do suffer from that sort of recurring pain or the pain that kind of goes away and then it creeps back up again. So let's let's right. dive back into my, my lingering issue. Okay, so your lingering issue is, is your calf. And again, you're sitting all day and the calf aggravates after sitting. So the first thing I would do as a therapist is I would see what kind of function you have in your thoracic spine so your your mid back area because that's where everything sort of functions from and that if you look at this picture here where it says thoracic kyphosis it's a so big word but the one in the middle and that's what most people do when they're sitting so if you look at the good posture that's where we'd like you to be the thoracic kyphosis is in appropriate posture it's going to create a lot of issues down below because as soon as you get up you're still stuck in that position so right. that's going to create a lot of extra issues down below in the calf because now you're leaning forward on your feet creating more pressure in your calf not allowing it to relax and release okay that's interesting so if by doing by unloading the back now robin we have a picture of a great tool that we have to help unload the back Yes, we do. Let me get to that thoracic <laughs> so, mobility. So there's me. For mobility. those of you who don't know me, that I'm on the right. <laughs> and that's not me on the left. <laughs> so just, just so people know. Okay, so uh, you want me to move forward when we talk about... Right, so, right, so here's our health bridge and our, our posture arch of what we use to help release or the foam roller. And also below on that right-hand side, we also have towel rolls. So you can use many different things. If you don't have one of our arches, you can use towel rolls to help open up your spine. As you see with the young lady in the picture there, she's on a foam roller and opening up the front of the body and allowing the spine to get into some form of a neutral strain. And we also had a question there if you want to yeah, look at that. So um, from Nelson, I had a shoulder and bicep surgery nine weeks ago. I'm still doing ice. Should I change that to heat, Sandy? Well, the first thing I'd say to you is, um, are you still have swelling and severe pain? If you did still have swelling, I'd say ice, but then when you don't have the pain, I would use heat. So at that stage, because it's a surgery, not like a sprained ankle, you'd want to go ice and heat at this stage. And then in the next week or so, move to mostly heat. Perfect. And Nelson, um, he, so he's still in lots of pain. So Nelson, what I might suggest is uh, Sandy's email will be listed at the end of this email. So this seems like a little bit more specific. Um, Probably, yeah. So what we'll do is, Nelson, uh, we can definitely follow up with you post-webinar to make sure we're giving you more specific advice because a lot of this information today is general advice um, and, and we do get really specific with people, especially post-op. Um, so this is general today, um, but we will definitely follow up with you. Um, and then we have a second. And Rhonda question. as well, if Rhonda wants to email me because she seems to have a, a large yes. uh, a so knee, knee thing. So she Rhonda, can email me as well. So I'm going to type in Sandy's email into this chat. So if there's any specific questions about your injuries, um, I would kindly ask you to hold off on those uh, specific questions and email Sandy directly. Um, if it is more of a general question, please feel free to pose it to the group if it's about workstations or sports or, or general injuries. Um, to really dive into the more specific questions, um, it will be uh, it will be easier to follow up with you directly. Um, and then another question from Pauline. Pauline, we miss you. I haven't seen you in so long. <laughs> miss um, you, Pauline. Yeah. Andy, I, how I, I, long do you do the roller okay. exercise in the picture? That's that's great. Look, oh, we miss you too, Pauline. Okay, so the, the, we stem for uh, generally about ten minutes 
If you can do it twice a day, that's great. But some people have very, very stiff, stiff backs. So sometimes they have to do two to three minutes, but maybe three or four times a day. So we break it up for them. So what I'd say to you, Pauline, is if you can handle 10 minutes, great. If you can do it twice a day, fantastic. But if you can't, and it's really starting to aggravate you at about two to three minutes, break it up throughout the day. You don't have to do it all at once. That's the beauty of it. Perfect. Okay, so first step first, regardless of what I'm really suffering with, as long as it's not some crazy catastrophic injury, is thoracic mobility. So that's step one. Absolutely. So I'm going to really start using my arch more. I am trying to use it as much as I can, um, and it's right behind me. Um, I do have that at all times, everybody. Um, so I'm going to start using that more often. Okay, so what's the next step, Sandy, um, for dealing with my issue? Well, again, once you start moving your back and you're actually, it will start to ease off a little bit on the calf. The next main important thing we're going to be looking at is some sort of strength training and rebuilding back any sort of weaknesses that you have and then working on you on sort of a, a conditioning and maintenance program. Because just like when you try new medication from the doctor, the doctor likes you to come back every couple of weeks to ensure A, it's doing its job and B, you're doing your job. So that's what we also like to do as well. So maintenance for us is extremely important to ensure that we're still going on the right track. And the beauty of what we do is we always reassess on each and every session. So that way, if something has changed, gotten better, or something else has popped up, an old, old injury you completely forgot about, the beautiful thing is we're always checking and always looking for those things. So we get you on a proper conditioning and maintenance program. But not only with myself, but our strength conditioning coach or anybody else that we need to bring in. Okay, so at Hansberger Physio, you guys are very used to um, cross referring between massage therapy, athletic therapy, based on the needs of the client. Or absolutely. So, so it's very common for that to happen. Absolutely, we we cool. share clients, we help each other. Um, we're a, not only, as you said earlier, family based, but internally we all feel like a family as well so we share with each other we'll we'll ask other therapists if, if we can't get it right away we'll ask another therapist hey what do you look what do you see you know because everyone's got their own specific skill set and it just adds to a better overall session for the client because that's what's more about getting the client functional again getting them better again great okay so when we move into mobility and strength um we really wanted to be able to leave the group today with a, um, a daily recommended mobility program for lower back, upper back, uh, shoulder, and neck. Um, can you walk us through some of the uh, specific um, mobility exercises on this list? Because from what I understand, um, in order to build strength, we need to be mobile first. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why I, I like to get give everybody, um, and, and I've sort of just brought, started adding this to my program now, is stretches like these on a regular basis to give people sort of something they can do every day just to keep themselves mobile. Now, if there's something specifically wrong with them, we'll give specific to that actual condition, but we also give general stretches to keep you on a general basis. So I'll give you an example. Number one is just rotating the neck on a slight, you know, slight sort of basis, right? All we are is gently rotating the neck. We don't want to go back. We just go side forward to the, to the side, right? And we want to do that again. Those are for 10 seconds sort of holding on each side for 10 seconds and kind of bringing it back to the other side for 10, just to keep the neck mobile, especially staring at a computer all day. Number two, I love because it's breathing. It's taking 20 seconds, 10 seconds to sit and breathe for a moment from your belly. Okay, number three. What's the difference example, between breathing from your belly and your rib cage? And um, how does that imp impact overall health and wellness? Oh, Robin, I love your questions. They're always so intuitive. Okay, so breathing <laughs> from your belly. or something. <laughs> breathing from your belly is sort of helping you to build up your diaphragm muscle. I find, and what I've seen from all my clients, is breathing from the rib cage tends to lift the shoulders up, creating more tension in the neck, more tension in the shoulders, instead of breathing from your belly and allowing the shoulders to relax and the rib cage to drop. So the main thing is we don't want to sit like this and breathe because now we're not breathing. 
We right. want to be able to drop our shoulders, breathe from our bellies. It takes our nervous system a couple of notches down, allows us to relax a little bit. And when we do that, we take some tension automatically out of the muscle. And, and that's the goal is to allow us to first stretch, then strengthen. Perfect. So um, you also would assess my diaphragm at some point, even if I'm coming Absolutely. in for a calf complaint? Even if, even if you're not coming in, we can assess it through telehealth, work together oh. on seeing which side of your diaphragm moves better than the other one, and then work with you on breathing exercises to actually get the diaphragm functioning better, which will take pressure off of your back and allow you to function easier. Great. So then moving on to perhaps number four or five, where we alleviate some of that um, pent up back pain. Um, is that something that you could go over with us? Sure. So number four is you're basically just lying on your back with your knees up and all you're trying to do is bring your pelvis down to the floor. Some of us have a really, really big arch in our lower back and that could cause a lot of instability in our, in our bodies. And especially when we've got such a big hunch in the, in, in the mid spine, we're gonna have an opposite effect in the lower spine. So number four is kind of bringing your body flat on the ground, now, kind of letting really your lower back release. Now is that a really subtle movement um, in terms subtle. of moving my pelvis? So it feels really small. Um, right, absolutely. Okay. Small, subtle movements, breathing gently through it and allowing the back and the pelvis to drop to the floor. You don't wanna do it immediately hard, because again, you're going to create more of a tightness in the muscles. That we're, that's not what we're looking for. Okay. And number five is just to gently put our hands behind our neck. And we're not going to do, it's, it looks like a sit-up, but we're gently going to just stretch the neck forward with our hands, allowing the neck to relax. But we're not stretching our neck into our chest because that's not what we want. We want to bring the chin up and forward and into almost on top of the chest. Okay, so it's kind of like stretch. an opening the chest up and, and raising the chest up as opposed to a crunch. Correct, correct. Because okay. we're not trying to do an exercise. We're trying to release the upper shoulders and the neck area. Okay. Um, a lot of people are very familiar with six, seven, and eight. It's just rotating side to side, giving yourself a light stretch. Um, nine is just bringing your knee to chest. And again, when you're doing these, breathe through. Number 10, if, if people can do it, um, bring in the two feet together, so the bottoms of the feet together. Um, and if you can bend a little forward, great. If not, just sit there and allow the knees to gently drop to the floor. Okay. Uh, number, number 11 is to sort of help open up your mid back. So one leg will cross over, the opposite arm goes on the opposite leg, and you're gonna rotate your body, not your neck. So the neck stays in the same position as the, as the body, but the body's going to twist. Okay. Right? So that's going to help open up the mid to lead with the head, lead with the shoulders, mm -hmm. kind of. And the right, top. exactly. The shoulder okay. has to move forward and around. Right. Okay. Um, number 12 is a very simple, we call it sort of a lazy hip flexor stretch. Um, it's for those that just, they, they, they're, they're just tight in their hips and they just feel like they're too far forward. What you do is you lean back gently on your hands. Now, please, please, please only go as far back as you comfortably feel. Don't try and be a superhero and think you can drop to the floor because <laughs> it's very, very, it could be very painful if you, if, if you drop too fast. So, so the nice thing I like to do is just to this come back and slow. listen to your body from a pain perspective. You have to. Always now, listen to your body. Now, when I stretch, how much pain is, is too much pain? Like, I, sometimes I don't know if I'm stretching too much or I'm, I'm not stretching enough. What, what's, the, what's the pain threshold that I should be feeling? Or should, is pain not even something that I should be feeling when I stretch? Well, that's another great question. So um, how I look at stretching is stretching should feel like a gentle pull and not pain. Okay. If I find if you're stretching and it's painful, you've gone too far. You're putting too much pressure on the muscle and possibly on the joint and for sure on the nerve. So okay. bring it back. Let it go to a point of pull, but not pain. Okay, great. Okay, so now I've got that. So um, I think then we'll move on to number 13. Okay, 13 is just um, all you're going to do is try and bend down and reach your toes. You want to try and keep your back 
straight. So some of us may only be able to reach our knees. That's okay. The point is you're just trying to stretch the lower back only, not trying to reach for your toes. And you would probably feel a slight pull in your hamstring on that one, correct, as well? On, on the leg that's straight in the back of the leg, you, could, you will feel a bit of a pull, and that's normal and very good. And you will generally feel a, a gentle pull in your lower back as well. Right. Okay, number 14 is just trying to keep your ankles moving. So when we do finally get up and actually walk, our ankles are loose and not tight. So we're gonna rotate them in circles. And again, you wanna go within the range that you can. And yes, that was a good point. Breathing should be done through the nose and out through the mouth. Very good. I love all this, this correspondence to everybody. Okay, and again, with uh, 14, it's just rotating the ankle. You can go forwards and backwards. Um, you want to go to this slide now? Or Sorry, you no, I, I was trying to get out of the chat, and I, uh, I'm obviously <laughs> so not as Zoom inept as some other people. Sorry about that. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, you have limited time. Are there five or so exercises you would recommend to do daily, or would you switch it up? Great exercise. I would take um, one from each sort of area and switch it up. So I would, if your neck hurts, do, do one. If your lower back hurts, I would do 10 and 13. If your shoulders hurt, I would, tr I would do 19 and 20, maybe even 21. Okay, so Melissa, that's a great follow-up question. Um, everybody who joined the webinar today will be getting a custom one-pager of this mobility and strength um, program, one through 22. But what we can do to make this more applicable to um, people who are in a bit of a time crunch or maybe taking a brief break from work or looking after the kids or we can get a five minute one. Yep. Teacher, we will create a one through five um, quick and dirty version for those people who are a little bit time crunched. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So we can move on to the next slide if you want there, Robin. Perfect. And what we'll do, everybody, is we'll include um, proper instructions on how to effectively uh, do each uh, mobility exercise. And it will also be accompanied with a video um, to make things a little bit easier for you because it's all about technique and it's all about form um, as opposed to overdoing it. Absolutely. Now, again, we want, to, we want to give you these kind of slides because the most important thing for us as therapists when we can't see you is for you to see yourself. So what we'd like you to do on your own is take this, when we give it to you, is take this sort of picture and, and put yourself in it. Are you the guy on the left or are you the girl on the right? And if you're guy on the left, you're going to have an idea of why things are starting to bother you, why your neck hurts, why your shoulders are giving you an issue why your lower back is giving you issue, why are you possibly getting some numbness or tingling down your legs. Now, Jamie, the, is it possible to be the guy on the left and the girl on the right? Well, sometimes we end up doing a bit of both. Um, I have been caught on a regular basis, unfortunately, when I get very zoned into my computer for having inappropriate posture. The, one of the great thing is, is, try, is doing your very best to recognize when you're in this position, what you need to do to get out of it, and try and stay in the better position as much as possible. So I think, I like to think I'm the girl on the right, and then when I get tired or I'm on a longer conference call, I definitely become the guy on the left. So it's more just about being aware of the body position you are in and not adopting those bad habits. That slide we saw earlier in the presentation. Um, when we get tired, bad habits start to occur, and that's when injuries can happen. So it's really just about recognizing your body position, and it's always about being neutral, adjustable, and balanced. Um, a neutral body uses less energy, but it also helps to reduce injury. So um, in order to become neutral, you must be mobile. Um, so that's really why we talked about the thoracic spine, and then we gave you that sort of uh, 22 exercise self uh, mobility program so that you can be neutral. Um, to just give yourself the, uh, the goal of having better posture and just reminding yourself to sit up straight, it's not maintainable over time. So that's really what the premise of today is all about. It's giving you a plan to make something attainable over time, um, giving you a neutral body, which uses less energy and overall ultimately helps you reduce your injuries. So, um, 
there are a number of tools that uh, we can use. So Sandy, for example, with my calf issue, um, is, is the Theracane or uh, like I have, at, for example, at home, I have a tennis ball that I've been using to massage my calf, but maybe I'm not even, I shouldn't even be massaging my calf. Um, yeah, what, well, here's what, should here's I, what I would do. I would, I would take the Theracane and the, the posture arch and I would use it in my mid back to ensure my back is moving. And then what I would do is I would actually take the Theracane and work down the back of my thigh to ensure that I don't have anything sort of creating that tension down below in the calf. Okay. I would also take the Theracane and you can massage your calf because when your muscles are really tight and constantly turned on, they are going to need some massage to help release them and turn them off. So definitely after you've heated up the area, I would get in with their Theracane for about five minutes, maybe three minutes, depending on the sensitivity of the, of the calf, and sort of massage that area out. And then I would try and walk afterwards. Okay, so always try to do some light activity after the myofascial release. And for those on the phone who don't know what myofascial release is, that's really just trigger point release. Um, so areas where you do feel a tight knot, um, releasing those areas, but then being af active after the fact. If you're sedentary after releasing, it really does no, no good in releasing the muscles and not being active, even lightly active after the fact. So it's always good to uh, just do even a light walk around the block, go for a walk on the treadmill, that kind of thing. Absolutely. And again, it's just a gentle walk. It's true. And you've got to always think about the movement around your foot into your calf and try and get it sort of functioning and stiff. Just kind of picture what the other leg is doing and try and do what the other leg is doing as well. So that okay. way you can sort of repeat the same pattern on both sides instead of, you know, just in case if you had a limp earlier or anything, you want to just look at what the opposite leg is doing because that's probably normal and then try and copy what that's doing. But you definitely, after releasing it, you definitely try and you need to move it. Okay, great. So um, the other uh, alternatives for the Theracane, for those of you on the phone today who don't have a Theracane, um, it can be a spiky ball. Um, we offer blue or purple spiky balls. We also have something that's a little bit less subtle, uh, or sorry, more subtle. It's just, it's, it's a little cross ball or a tennis ball. Anything that really helps to apply pressure to a certain point um, it is something that we would want to use. So uh, depending on your th pain threshold and things like that, um, also a, a roller, a foam roller can do the trick uh, for larger muscles. Um, but for Absolutely. smaller muscles, we really want to focus on something with a smaller trigger point. Absolutely. The spiky ball is the best. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> All right. So um, we've got that. Now, okay. Okay, so we've got um, the, you've really helped me understand what's causing my calf pain. You've helped me understand that I need to work on other parts of my body that are causing that pain. So I'm worked, I, I've worked on my thoracic spine. I'm mobile mm -hmm. there. And I've worked on general mobility um, and, and trigger release. Now, um, is there something that I can use for ongoing um, maintenance, uh, a strength and conditioning program? Um, are there tools that help me stay aligned all day long? Well, that's a great, that's a great sort of add into the Aligned Posture Shirt 2.0. So the Posture Shirt that we have here is a fabulous product. Um, I have one, I, I wear it when I'm working, um, I'll wear it when I'm training, um, and I recommend it to, to every one of my patients it, it, it's one of the amazing products that once you put it on, it's really going to help force you be in the position all day long without having to think about it. So, so that helps me reduce my body fatigue and use less energy. Is that correct? And helps me stay in a neutral position? That's correct. So it keeps your thoracic spine in the position it's meant to be. It keeps your upper body functional over your lower body and it allows proper communication from the head down to your feet. So now you're actually moving better, you're balanced, you're more flexible, the recovery of your body is easier because you've got better communication from the head down to the feet, you're in proper alignment and at the same time you've got increased range of motion because instead of being forward hunched you're straight up and now you can move better. And you just know where you are better in, in, in your body positioning when you're walking, when you're running, when you're playing sport, or even just when you're sitting. 
Okay, perfect. So quick question from the group and what we will do, we will be wrapping up by one o'clock everybody. Um, so we will open up uh, for questions very shortly. <clears throat> Um, but this does help with scoliosis, um, yes. depending on the severity of the scoliosis, um, Absolutely. manual therapy, um, and mobility is first and, and key. Uh, the posture arch is, um, depending on the severity again of the scoliosis is something that we mm -hmm. use every day in our practice and then complementing with the posture shirt. The great thing about the posture shirt, it also comes in a bra format. I'm actually wearing that now. Sorry, that's probably too much information for all of you. Um, but um, it does come in many different forms depending on the type of clothing that you're comfortable wearing. Um, and it's not just white. It comes in black. It comes in white. So if you're going to wear it as an undershirt, it can match whatever else you're wearing. Okay, so what we really okay. learned today is that there's lots of different options in terms of... Um, uh, things that we need to do from home to manage our pain, to determine the cause right. of the pain. But then there's a lot of things we can do once we determine what's the root cause to make sure it doesn't come back, whether that's mobility, whether that's strength and conditioning. We do realize that will change over time, but there's also home tools that can replicate the hands of a therapist from the comfort of your own home. Um, so things like the Theracane, the posture arch, um, things you may have at home already. So just because you aren't seeing your therapist in person at the moment doesn't mean you can't help yourself reduce your pain from home and it's our job to educate you on that um, so we have many of those different um, tools from home so there's the posture arch uh, there's the theracane there's the power breath but there's also taking care of yourself to make sure that you're properly fueled internally um, internally yeah. so whether you're fueling yourself for a work day, whether you're fueling yourself for a bike ride or a physical activity, it's really important to look at how you're taking care of yourself holistically so that you also recover faster and don't have issue the next day. We're going to fast forward on the bio steel and more of the nutritional aspect. That's probably I'll just, I'll just make this. Can I make a quick comment? If you don't Absolutely. mind, Debbie, um, yeah. I got your, I got your question. Why don't you uh, send me? So anybody's got questions about costs or about, um, the lazy muscles and things like that about wearing the posture shirt, just send me personally. Um, but it won't cause your muscles to be lazy. It will actually activate the muscles even more. But for any more deeper questions on the posture shirt, definitely send me the email and I will go into further information about the posture shirt. Again, I love it. It's been a great thing, a tool for me to use. And, and many of the individuals that I work with are, are using them as well. And we there have seen um, the posture shirt and the posture arch covered on various health plans if you have a health spending account. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing to keep in mind as well. All of these products are available for sale on our website and our blog, which we will get to shortly, has information on all of them and, and really sort of giving you more insight and deeper dives into how they can impact your health and wellness. Um, but at the end of the day, we're trying to instill that home care works. A lot of other therapists and a lot of other practitioners may ask you to come in three to four times a week at the start of uh, your injury. That is absolutely not the case with Hansberger. We wanna give you a home care plan that works. We know coming into Hansberger two to three times a week, right now it's not possible at all, but when we do get back to normal, you have things in your life, you have work, you have school, you have kids, there's many things going on. So for you to come in to see us, not only is it not financially feasible, but time isn't either. So our job is to give you a home care plan that is effective for long-term sustainable change. Um, lastly, uh, it's all about education. And that's really what we've tried to do to do for you today. There are four resources here that we will send out to all of the participants today. Um, and we do have some great resources on our website. We have a patient education portal. We have a blog. We have a great YouTube channel and on our Instagram page, there's a lot of information as well. Um, so we will kind of move forward, but you will get access to these links uh, via email. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about building a better you. So if there's anything you're gonna take away from this talk, it would be to take breaks and stretch often. Vary your activities during the day, pay attention to your body, stay active and eat healthy, get proper sleep, and really participate in an ongoing maintenance plan. Whether it's with us or your therapist of choice, it's about ongoing maintenance. And lastly, when in doubt, get it checked out. That is the most important thing. Don't try to work through something. Don't be a hero. When in doubt, get it checked out. Absolutely, please.
All right, and then just to wrap it all up here, we are, like I said, uh, we still are offering virtual assessment and follow-up sessions for our clients. We do provide virtual ergonomic assessments to make sure that your new at-home workstation is actually working for you. And we also are creating custom personal training programs. Um, all of this is done virtually, and we do tailor it to whatever you have available in your home, uh, whether that's no weight at all, or, uh, or you have a, a little bit of equipment, all of that is great. As for the reopening date, a lot of people have been asking. We still have not been given the formal go-ahead from the provincial government. We are looking at early June, but again, all of this is tentative. So for now, if you have any questions, uh, you can call any of the numbers below, 905-841-0411 or 905-940-2627. To book a virtual assessment or a follow-up session, you can click on the link um, booking there or you can contact us directly. So you can contact Sandy at his email there or my email here. Um, and we would like to open up the floor to questions if there anything is that, that we didn't touch on. Um, and uh, we appreciate your time today and we hope we did add some value. If there is any questions, you can unmute yourself and ask or you can type it into uh, the chat feature and we'll do our best to answer those. Hi, um, is, this is Joe. I have two questions very quickly. One, I submitted one about the doctor whole thing for the shoulders and, and neck. I, I don't want to badmouth them or not, but I'm just wondering, is there any value to that, to that apparatus, that TENS machine that he has? I don't know if you're aware of it. No, Dr. Ho, I'm, I'm very aware of it. Um, all I would suggest is um, please be careful. Uh, I, I just, I've experimented with myself. If some people can, um, hurt themselves on it. So I would start, if anything, at a very light sort of range and then gently move yourself up to what you need. Um, but what I would also suggest is if you're using something like Dr. Ho, it means you are suffering from something. So why don't you get in contact with us? Let's see if we can go through and maybe... Yeah, this is for, sorry to interrupt. This, this is for yeah. my wife. She is a patient, but, but okay. she's in crisis and she can't get in that she's wondering whether there'd be any any value to that or if it's just sort of throwing out your money type of thing, you know? Listen, if you've already got it, absolutely okay. use it and we could always walk you through it. Okay. Yeah, why don't you have your wife give us a call after this um, and we can make sure that you're using it uh, effectively. Okay, and, and my second question is I have an elevated left uh, shoulder, which Kevin treats me for. He has me doing yeah. knee, he has me moving my left knee to my right shoulder. Correct. Is there, is there anything else I can do? Because it doesn't seem to be, it still seems really high. I can't seem to get it down. The left. Okay. So what else I would do is number one, I would get on your, lie on your back flat. I would see if you can raise your arms above your head and I would try like on the floor and I would try and work on your breathing or on your bed, try and work on your breathing to sort of work on the left side rib cage to open it up even more because what might be happening is it's your diaphragm and the muscles might just be way too tight coming up into your body so it's the left side i want to loosen up which is the high side correct absolutely you want to loosen that up it's, it's tightening up on you so it could be a, a reason there, there's many reasons why but right. the first thing i would try and do is make sure that rib cage on the left side is moving so put the hands on the on the rib cage see if it moves if it doesn't lie flat on your back arms above your head and work on the breathing and then email me and we can work further on through there if you want and Thank the you, last Sandy. question from alex and then we'll wrap it up all of our contact information is listed here and we will definitely um, answer all of your questions post session as well but alex yes i do think if you're ignoring the pain as long as it doesn't create um, further physical damage that's a no-no. Um, when there's pain, there's an underlying issue. Um, it's not dealt with at the time. It can lead to far further damages in the future. So even though it might not be tomorrow, if we look at 10 years from now and you can't go golfing or play pickup hockey with your friends or your kids or your family, that's a problem. So when in doubt, ask. Um, do not ignore. Um, we know that with our homes, with our cars, if we do ignore something, there's going to be future damage. Um, it doesn't always mean that you're going to have to spend a lot of money or commit a lot of time, um, but it's really best to get it checked out. 
Absolutely. I agree totally. Question. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. It's one o'clock. Thank you so much for your participation today. We really appreciate it. If there's any further questions, please feel free to follow up with us by phone or email, and we'll be more than happy to take your questions offline and answer all of uh, your questions and get you on the right track. Again, I'm Robin Hansberger, and this is Sandy Levy, and we appreciate your time today. And uh, we look you forward all. to seeing you again in the future. Take care. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Sandy. That was really great Thank information. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye, everybody.